Hello all, welcome back in the classes on pulmonary drug delivery system. In my previous classes, I have already presented and discussed the respiratory system, the purpose why we use this route and salient features of pulmonary absorptive surfaces. This presentation will give you an idea how we can deliver drugs that is the de devices for pulmonary administration. So we can deliver a drug formulation in pulmonary route by three types of devices. Number one is dry powder inhalation devices that is DPI. Number two is nebulizers. And number three is the pressurized meter dose inhalation devices that is PMDI or simply meter dose inhaler or MDIs. Pulmonary drug delivery devices may be categorized broadly into two types. Number one is nebulizers and number two is compact portable inhalers. Compact portable inhalers are of two types that is DPI and MDI. DPI again may be of two types active DPI and passive DPI and meter dose inhaler may be of three types breathe actuated MDI, CFC free MDI and add-on devices and nebulizers may be of three types jet nebulizer, vibrating mesh nebulizers and ultrasonic wave nebulizers. So coming to the first part that is dry powder inhalation devices. So this is the discus inhaler most commonly used as DPI devices. Here the drug aerosol is created in the DPI by directing air through loose powder. Most DPI contain micronized drug blended with larger carrier particles, generally lactose, which prevent aggregation of the particles and which also promotes flow. Most drug particles from DPI are too large to penetrate into the lungs because either large powder agglomerates or the presence of large carrier particles. The dispersion of the powder into the fine respirable particles depends on the creation of turbulent airflow that causes the aggregates to break up the particles small enough to be carried into the lower airways. The airway resistance regulates the required inspiratory effort. That is, higher the resistance, the inspiratory effort is required much high. But the chances to deliver the drug in the lower part of alveoli or lungs is more. DPIs are used to treat different respiratory disorders, for example, asthma, COPD, cystic fibrosis, lung infection, etc., and other systemic disorders also, for example, diabetes, cancer, etc. So, DPI devices may be categorized into active DPI and passive DPI. The passive DPI means the devices requiring the patient's inspiration effort to aerosolize the powder aliquot are called passive devices because as they do not provide an internal energy source. But active devices provide different kinds of energy for aerosolization. For example, kinetic energy by a loaded spring or compressed air or electric energy by using a battery. This is the picture of handy inhaler. Principle of dry powder inhaler design. In the left side, we have seen that the fine powder formulations are blended with the large carrier particles, that is microfine lactose. So the reason for mixing or blending the microfine lactose with the formulation is already said before. So after that, this formulation are metered in various modes. For example, for turbohaler, we use the powder in the powder reservoir. And for rota disc, we use blister disc. For discus type inhaler, we use blister strip. And for rota inhaler, we use the powder in capsule. After that, the powder is dispersed by active DPI method or passive DPI method as said previously. After that, these larger particles are deposited in the oropharyngeal area and the smaller particles are goes by different mechanisms 
which has been discussed in my previous classes and they delivered in the different regions of pulmonary root that is the, uh, up to the lower parts of lung depending on the particle size. Pulmonary drug delivery devices may be categorized broadly into two types. Number one is nebulizers and number two is compact portable inhalers. Compact portable inhalers are of two types that is DPI and MDI. DPI again may be of two types active DPI and passive DPI and meter dose inhaler may be of three types breath actuated MDI, CFC free MDI and add-on devices and nebulizers may be of three types jet nebulizer, vibrating mesh nebulizers and ultrasonic wave nebulizers. So coming to the first part that is dry powder inhalation devices. So this is the discus inhaler most commonly used as DPI devices. Here the drug aerosol is created in the DPI by directing air through loose powder. Most DPI contain micronized drug blended with larger carrier particles generally lactose which prevent aggregation of the particles and which also promotes flow. Most drug particles from DPI are too large to penetrate into the lungs because either large powder agglomerates or the presence of large carrier particles. There are three types of nebulizers. Number one, jet nebulizer. Number two, ultrasonic nebulizers. And number three is vibrating mesh nebulizers. Jet nebulizers are also called as air jet or air blast nebulizers. The jet nebulizer functions by Bernoulli's principle by which jet of high velocity compressed gas that is air or oxygen is passed through a narrow orifice of 0.32.7 mm diameter thus creating an area of low pressure at the outlet of the adjacent tube, liquid feed tube. This results in the drug solution being drawn up from the fluid reservoir and shattering into droplets in the gas stream. For example, Perry LC nebulizer. This is the picture of jet nebulizer. Next is ultrasonic nebulizers. In this, the energy necessary to atomize liquids comes from the piezoelectric crystal that is vibrating at high frequency of about 1 to 3 megahertz. The high frequency vibration actually generates a fountain of liquid in the nebulizer chamber. The higher the frequency of vibration, the smaller the droplets produce. However, the ultrasonic nebulizers have some limitations. Number one, these have large residual volumes, means large losses of formulation is there. Number two is they are in unable to aerosolize viscous solutions and number three degradation of heat sensitive materials due to heat produced due to vibration thus they are not suitable to formulate with suspensions and protein drugs as proteins may denatured due to heat next is vibrating mesh nebulizers in this device, aerosols are generated by passing liquids through a vibrating mesh or a plate with multiple apertures. But these devices also have some limitations. That is, delivery of viscous drugs 
or suspensions can clog the pores and it can be difficult to determine from the output of the device. Also, cleaning of the mesh nebulizers can be difficult. Furthermore, these nebulizers are also more expensive than the jet nebulizers. This is the picture of ultrasonic nebulizer where piezoelectric crystals here creates the ultrasonic waves. Next is equipments required for the nebulization. First one is nebulizer and nebulizer connecting tube. Second is mouthpiece or mask. Third is respiratory medication to be administered. Number four is normal saline solution. Number five is sterile water. Number six cotton balls. Number seven face mask. And number eight is disposable tissues. So, thank you for watching. In my next presentation or next lecture, I will discuss the remaining part that is pressurized meter dose inhalers and the aerosols. Thank you.